Tom here from Lawrence Systems. It is March of 2021. This is my updated studio. And I say updated because, well, over the years, we're always looking at different iterations and different changes and what changes need to be made and uh, tweaks here and there. So this is the current version, the March 2021 version of the studio. I want to start out with when you're building this, and especially people in the tech industry who think about creating content, uh, they sometimes go gear crazy. And this is one of those don't go gear crazy just because you can afford a lot of gear or something looks fancy doesn't mean it's necessarily aligned with your goal. You do have to figure out your goal. Now that can be really hard, especially in the beginning. I did a lot of videos on different topics and it was kind of throwing a spaghetti at the wall to you figure out which topic I was really good at or what's my niche. And it turns out I really like doing firewall videos. I really like talking about storage servers and teaching people about technology. And that is a primary goal and focus. My focus is not to create an absolute beautiful cinegraphic experience like you would have in a movie or some creators who really do a beautiful job on YouTube of creating a cinema type experience to bring you into the story. I'm here to give you tutorials. Why I'm saying all that? Because someone will point out and they can accurately point this out. That's not a critique. It's a accurate statement that Tom, you don't spend a lot of time color grading. Tom, you don't spend uh, enough time, you know, making the colors pop and tuning it perfectly. And your skin tone looks a little off. Uh, you didn't, hopefully you didn't come here for that because uh, that's not something I plan on doing. I focused on getting the videos out. Therefore, some of these tools and some of these methods are not gonna make the absolute highest quality, highest bit rates of video. It's going to be the adequate amount of video for me to convey the message, to get the tutorial done, and uh, allow for really fast editing like this. Now that's not actually an edit, and that's something I wanna bring up right away. I'm using a Streamlabs Stream Deck. Now Streamlabs also is the OBS tool I'm using. There's a tool called OBS Studio and then there's Streamlabs OBS Studio. I'm not gonna get into nuances of the difference, but I use the Streamlabs version, which is enhanced to work with these devices. This allows me to have a single stream. So I'm taking the output of the studio camera and we'll get to all the gear here in a second. And then it goes into the Streamlabs OBS Studio running on Windows. People seem to be disappointed that I'm not running it on Linux. It doesn't work well on Linux and it's not worth the headache to try to fight with it. it. Comes back to that efficiency. I want to get videos out faster, not spend a lot of time monkeying with why doesn't it work now. Uh, Windows is the best platform for the ingestion of all these different feeds including the main camera and making the Stream Deck work. Now, now we can actually talk a little bit about gear, but the switching back and forth is facilitated by this and it makes it a lot easier because now I can take each one of these feeds and just switch in real time. And back to me not hiding the cinemagraphic or trying to create, I should say, a cinema version to not make you aware of the tools being used. I'm kind of indifferent on it because I don't think they make much of a difference if you see me press the button. All right, I just love pressing the button so it does that. Because by the way, it also uh, allows me to do things like this. I have an overhead. I, I look up because I have the camera right above my head and I can get things prepped. So now I'm holding this little cool 3D printed articulated, uh, yeah, face hugger. Uh, anyways, so I can hold something like this and have a product in my hand. And then this is how you see it right here. So being able to switch back and forth when you're doing your review, very handy back over to the gear because people want to know the list. I will leave my link to the 2019 studio tour. Uh, the structure is still the same. We still have these black pipes that you see across the top here. And those are the pipes that are uh, went over to Lowe's because it's behind my building. No preference specifically to where you get them from, but they're black pipe that's made for gas lines, I believe. Um, I don't know, it's called black pipe. And we put some flange ends on it and ran it across that way everything can mount. Once you have these pipes going across there, uh, there's professional studio gear you can buy, um, but this whole three set of pipes costs less than one piece of like the profes professional studio gear, which I forget what that stuff's called. It's like tri bracket something. Someone who works in the industry would know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, it's the scaffolding type stuff that is normally used. Black pipe turns out works really well if you have some of these uh, limo studio super clamps with standard stud. That's what's clamping things together. And then these impact to uh, section double arm. You can find these on Amazon. You can also find these at b &H Photo. Shop around for the best deal. But um, yes, this is an affiliate link store I have set up in kit. I will leave this link below. The mounts for some of the cameras are on Joby mounts, specifically the overhead camera, because it makes it a nice quick release. 
I have the Aperture AL 528s. Those are what's in front of me and they don't come with the box. So I put a little light box on them to kind of diffuse it. So that's what that is there. I still shoot with the Canon C100. Now the Canon C100 is a Canon studio camera. A little bit of trivia. I used to be a wedding photographer and a professional photographer for a number of years. And I always was a big, you know, fan of the Canon gear. Uh, the problem is Canon SLRs are not great for doing studio work. They kind of have left this market. I don't think they're the best uh, camera for that option until you go to their studio line, which are just, this is an expensive camera, uh, but I really like it. It's made for, I can leave it on for hours and hours and hours and record with no worry. The other Canon camera I had actually burned out in a 70D that I started with because I left it on too much. Um, this camera was designed to do this and has what they refer to as clean HDMI out. That way, when you're looking at it from this angle, there's no extras on the screen. There's sometimes hacks you have to do to some other cameras to get clean HDMI out, which is why I chose that camera. Back down the gear list, uh, the hair light, as it may be called, is a light above in the back of my head out of view. It's actually close to the ceiling, which is this little aperture light. I have these uh, GVM Great Video Maker. Clever or let, not so clever name, but that's what's kind of doing the accent splashes on the back of color that you have. Their adjustable color lights are pretty cool. The microphone I'm talking on right now is the Asden SMX30. That has uh, been a good microphone. It supports both stereo and mono. I thought I would use it more in stereo when I did group conversation stuff. It works great in mono. Just set a little further back from two people. And uh, it actually, I've been really happy with it. Now, the lens, Sigma 18-35 f1.8. Now, this lens is nice. It's sharp. It also allows me to have that really cool shallow depth of field that you're looking for. It's actually set right now to f2.0. Um, it'll go down as it says all the way to f1.8. Don't worry, I'm not going to get too technical on that. But if you want a lens that has that cool effect like that, boy, is that is that kind of neat. Pairing that with this Canon camera, I just like how it looks. Um, it will hunt a little bit when it tries to back focus though. Uh, so I gotta be, make sure I'm careful about how I focus or set it to manual focus. But yeah, not too much, not too hard to set up. It's usually, as you can see, an autofocus and doing that. Now, the booms, the ProMaster LS6 booms, uh, I use on occasion. I used to use them a lot more to get things hung over me, like cameras. Uh, I still have it in the list because sometimes you have a need for a boom. But since we put the bars across the top, it's less needed. The Field World T77 IPS 4K HDMI field monitor, uh, that's actually hanging um, over here. And I look at it, so when I have things set up, and I'm going to give a walk around here in a second, uh, you'll see that is so I can have a view from what's in that camera. So when I switch between things, I know where to look. And also TVs, which I have a TV that's on a stand for displays. Um, TVs are very inaccurate, I guess you could say. And when they're inaccurate, you end up with um, weird colors and it's not sure if the colors are right. Using a field monitor allows you to really determine if the colors are right and things are good. Um, it'll do this on my camera, but my camera is out of reach and hard to see. But the, yeah, having that over there, I can make sure the color's right. And hence that no post-processing color grading. Yeah, I, I get everything set up so I don't have to post-process and color grade. I don't use this lens too often, but for, if I need something ultra wide, I still have the Sigma uh, 10 to 20 millimeter and a Canon EOS mount to fit the Canon camera. I've done a couple group interviews here back, uh, we'll call that term BC. Um, and that is, uh, you know, before the events of 2020 and uh, Audio Technica, those are great to say it out. That's the reason I also have this Behringer in here. Um, we still have that and we'll line up microphones because it, the best audio is going to come from having a microphone very close to someone and putting those out on there. It's only when I do interviews or group interviews, if you've watched some of those type of videos I have. Now, I still have this ProMaster one, this uh, Cine tripod. It's a really nice solid tripod until I whacked into it really hard and cracked the little um, things that hold it together. It actually still works, but I wanted to pick up a little more portable tri uh, tripod and uh, it held up to more than one uh, banging into. I, I banged it pretty hard taking it somewhere uh, to, to cause that problem. It was a great uh, studio one. It is still a great studio one if you don't run into things. The uh, Corsair Elgato Stream Deck, as I mentioned. Now, the inputs, these are really important. Right now, you're listening to, and I say listening, the audio input and the main camera input is off that uh, Corsair Elgato Camlink 4K. 
that is coming in through here and it grabs the audio that comes from the Aston microphone, goes into the Canon camera and goes into the Elgato Camlink 4K. I still have, this is my overhead camera, is the Avermeter Avermedia Live Gamer. Now, one thing about the Aver Media Live Gamer is it's USB 2, therefore has a lot more compression, so you don't get quite the video quality out of it. Uh, they do make updated models that are USB 3. By the way, you will have more trouble because I have this that's USB 3. If you have a couple of USB 3 devices trying to take in a full high-res picture, uh, they can conflict with each other. And I've actually upgraded to which ones I have, and I'll get a little further down and talk about those, but those are still in use or just different spots. This is the, and you'll see it when I flip to the other side here in a minute, um, the Ankron mobile TV stand cart. Um, it's just an easy way to have a TV cart. So we have a portable, have a TV that can move around. And like I said, when I walk around, I'll show that. I do use these, these Sarmonics. I use them on occasionally. It's a really inexpensive, but reasonable quality, I think. Um, 2.4 gigahertz wireless microphone set up for two people. And it's one receiver, two transmitters, so you can mic up two people very quickly and uh, very painlessly. They're also USB-C charging, really easy to charge. These two items are actually in my office, which will end over there, but my office has these two DASNY lights in there and the Blue Yeti. Um, I have a silver Blue Yeti. This is a black Blue Yeti, which I think looks cooler, and I just don't think I should change it out. I still like the Blue Yeti. It's part of the USB input. It's how I do anything from my office. Uh, it's where I do my editing, but I do some of my other interviews, and sometimes when I talk to people, it's just easy to do in there, and occasionally some tutorials. This Elgato 4K60 is actually what's inputting from my laptop, where we're seeing this right here. Um, the Elgato 4K... MK2 PCIe card is really nice. I do have a little bit of a bug that I just haven't taken the time to solve, but I know I'm sure it's a solvable problem. I can't get audio out of it. It only likes video and doesn't grab an audio stream, and I don't know why, because um, at first I had the camera hooked up to it, and I'm positive, and if someone wants to send a link and leave it in the comments below, that's fine. But yeah, I do have a problem getting audio out of it because... Uh, a few other people, I noticed there's a YouTube video that says use this particular driver to fix that issue. But like I said, haven't really figured that one out. Kind of odd that out of the box it doesn't work. But the solution is use the Cam Link 4K, which works perfectly fine with audio. The current tripod is this one right here. I guess it's the Mi Photo Globetrotter. I really like this one. I picked it up on sale locally. I found a really good deal on, on it from uh, ProCam, but I have a link. It's actually now the same price on Amazon that I bought it when it had uh, probably a long times when it had first been released. But uh, yeah, that's definitely a nice features to have that um, because it's got really uh, small legs that fold up easy when you want to take it somewhere and not any plastic parts that when you're carrying around that other ProMaster one that you will, will drop and whack into stuff and crack the little plastic holders that are now broken on it. Um, so this one, yeah, no, they, it's got the twist lock, so harder to break. Sony Alpha 660 mirrorless premium. Now, let me explain how I use that. This is that overhead camera. Now the Sony overhead camera, and actually let's uh, look at the stream deck with it. So we'll do this right here. And now we're looking at the Sony camera and I'll line it up right here. Oh, come on, focus. There's sometimes is that. I will set the focus to manual frequently. Compared to Canon, Sony does focus a little bit slower, but Sony is definitely a really nice high quality camera and i use this camera for a couple different purposes the purpose of it right now is as an overhead and this is on the little joby so i can just spin it and quick release it i take it off this overhead it is now the camera in my office if i want to use it there or if i want to walk around and do some video i can do that and pop an sd card in it pop a microphone on it and then wander around and do some filming with it it's actually very diverse camera uh, that's why i don't mind having it you know, for an overhead, it would be kind of overkill for an overhead. I don't do a ton of product videos. It's nice though, because the Sony with the overhead, it goes wide with the kit lens. So now you're looking at a full overview of everything that's right here. And uh, I can zoom it in. So that's from just the zoom lens. I can do it really wide or all the way in. So I bought it just like that with the kit lens and uh, really happy with it. It's worked out really well. By the way, charges over USB. I wish it was C. It's unfortunately stupid micro USB, but uh, charges over it. So you, I just have the cables up here. One's plugged into a standard USB and the other one's a mini HDMI. I wish it had like 
well, micro HDMI. I wish it had mini or a full HDMI, but to keep the camera compact, they put a tiny one on there. It just feels delicate. So I'm always very careful when plugging it in. Last couple items on here. I do have a cage because there's not much to uh, mount on with the Sony and I wanted it in something really solid. So I have this little small rig cage. And finally, something that I didn't think I'd ever want uh, was a glide gear teleprompter. Now, the teleprompter is a little bit strange and we'll show it in action. I don't really script things, but where the teleprompter is really handy is for two things. One, I want to start being able to do when I do you know, some video conferencing, uh, you can use it to pop a laptop and including this one right here, I can just lay it flat, start the video conference on it or get a second monitor and use the main video conference here, but be able to project something on there and look directly at the person as opposed to kind of that off to the side you end up doing quite a bit. The other thing I'm using it for and why I have this little tablet right here is the part numbers can be difficult for me to say accurately. And especially when you're talking about two different models or I need some really detailed specs with a bunch of dates or uh, model and parts and just too much uh, little stuff that'll be hard to memorize and will make me repeat myself many times and cut it until I get the number right. Or if you're wrong and you're never as wrong as when you're wrong on the internet, when you said something wrong and didn't realize it, it's just easier. You pop it on a tablet and throw it over here. Now, the one I chose, this one is a bigger one than you should probably get. I bring that up because I bought this larger C100 camera. Therefore, this right here was a better fit to get the camera and the stuff on there. And I said, hey, why not? It's only $199 for the base model, but I wanted one of the bigger models, the 16-inch one. Like I said, probably a little overkill, but wow, is it great because then I had to buy a 10-inch tablet. And uh, right now I'm using this little Lenovo Duet, which is a Chromebook that also turns into a tablet. And uh, I'll show you how that works for it because having a 10-inch tablet means I can put really big words, lots of words, and still stare right at the camera unflinching and have them on there. There's nothing on it right now. I'll show you though how that works. One last thing before we switch the other way is this is a Chromecast behind my head and the Chromecast is great. And I'm just going to cast it from the tablet right here, but I like being able to throw something up there. You'll see a logo or something put on the back. Nothing special, just the old, I think that's probably an original version Chromecast behind me. And uh, that's all I have to do is pick a source. I actually picked a web page with the word Chromecast on it, but yeah, that's it. That's all nothing, nothing complicated for the back. Cause it's kind of blurred out. It's just to add some ambience to the back. Actually, I love when it's on the uh, Google Chromecast, how they have these, you know, rolling different artworks that come across. I kind of like that. Um, but if I want to switch to something, that's all I'm doing is grabbing a logo, casting that particular tab and away it goes. Now, I was going to switch to Sony, but I think it's just quicker if I do it over here on my phone. So we'll just uh, wipe off the lens so we get the best picture. And we're going to show you how I use the teleprompter uh, probably to start with. And um, just to give you an idea of how it looks and switch over to doing the video from here so I can walk around and kind of give you the little bit of walk around how this looks. Now, the app I use is actually called Parrot Teleprompter. And all it does is reverse things. I'm going to then set it up over here and slide this in and we can hit play. Come on, all right, it's doing its thing. Well, kind of, I hit it wrong. But you get the idea, you can actually see things really well from here, and that's the TV I'm talking about. So this, which I did not hit play on, come on. There we go. Maybe, it, yeah, you can see it. Like Star Wars, man, the words flow across and you're staring right into it. Now, let's go ahead and walk around while that's playing and give you the better idea of what's going on here. Complete separate video for this little messy rack over here, which is always where products are being tested and you know things for the studio. It's not actually anything production for the company. There's that TV from there. There's that little light I talked about from the top, those bars that go across, nothing real special, little clamps. I try to keep the wires as neat as possible, as reasonable up there. There's that uh, camera. So you can see how the Sony camera is mounted right here. Little Joby mount. Now, I'm, uh, I guess I could do it carefully. I don't know. This is a bad idea. Okay, good. I look loose enough so I can adjust it. This gives me a lot of angle options for this. And uh, the Joby mounts are solid. So then I can just better done with two hands, but stiffen it up a little bit. And these are on quick releases, which I will not release right now because that would just make the camera flop. There's 
This HDMI cable goes all the way around. Things come around here. And then I label them. So they come down from the ceiling. And just for clarity, I label things like this because I know this one's going to the Elgato. That one goes to the Live Gamer. This allows me, if I need to unplug something, I can just move it around, plug it in differently. If I have to take an output from a computer and feed it in there, I know where it's being fed. This is that right here. So when I'm doing that, now one of the things you'll notice, that's how it looks on the TV. And it may not come through on this camera, but you're getting a different color perspective from the TV. Uh, the red may show up a lot different. So if I take something, the TV looks kind of like glowy cartoon red to me. This one doesn't. And it also will tell me by blinking on the parts that are blown out. So this, you know, much better color adjustment. All right, let's swing around this way here and look at the microphone mount. I guess it's worth mentioning. It's just one of those little flexible bars to keep it in place. Uh, but it does come in handy to have it like that. So it's nice and isolated, but still has the flexible bars. Now these ones, I can give it a twist. I love how these work. So this is how it's like this. If I needed the light to be like that, and this works for any of these, these twist locks are great. They got little teeth in them and uh, swing it like that. Twist it right back into place. This is kind of a look at the glide gear, the tablet. We put this on here and I need something that doesn't bow as much, but this to keep the any reflectiveness off of the lens, make it as easy to see as possible and don't distract me because I am easily distracted. And uh, because I knew someone would ask, I wrote down what the settings were on here, so hard to read. But this is the F2 ISO 1000 current settings, which actually is settings that are most of the time. I will change the depth of field a little bit if need be to uh, you know make it a little bit sharper because I have a few more products. And yes, there's a little bit of rigging going on here to create this input right here, which by the way, this is how we switch inputs. Uh, everything's routed back up here, but, and then it just comes down into these XLR inputs. The microphone itself is not XLR. Someone will complain about it, but I think the audio quality is adequate from it, even without that. I do have a ring light over here. I don't use very often, but eh, sometimes I do. If, if I, I think I can add that to the kit uh, in the list. This was just, again, from Lowe's and just where all the extra gear is. And this TV here is pretty cool because it's on a stand. It's kind of like uh, the AV room that you had maybe back all the way in school. <laughs> and uh, But it's kind of neat. The, up ahead, these clip into the tracks and make the wire. That's just an HDMI and power. And by the way... The power and HDMI can be disconnected right here, and the HDMI splitter here. And the reason for that is if I want this to be disconnected and even rolled into another room, or when we roll things out of the way, because we do like cleaning a lot and vacuuming, um, we can easily roll this somewhere else. So not everything's in a fixed position. And uh, because our kitchen is over here in the office, we can actually take the TV and do this. And, whoops, drop things off of it. And uh, yeah, the TV flips around completely if I wanted it flipped around. So we can spin that back the other way. Now a quick closer look, just like I'd said, this is just, just black pipe, piece of the plastic decking, I guess you'd call it. I don't know what it's actually called. Um, I didn't put it up, one of my staff did. But yeah, then the black pipe and then there's those clamps and those, those GVM lights that I have back there. So that should give you an idea of like all the pieces and all the moving parts that are in the studio. And uh, last little piece I wanna do is take you into my office to kind of get you an idea of the workflow at the end and what happens from there. And we'll start right here with a quick picture of my office. It is six foot in depth and in length, nine foot. It is actually rather small. So yes, it is pretty much I'm standing in the doorway to get this picture. People think that I should have an office that where people can sit down with me. No, my office is my space where I close the door and have more sound deadening than needed to do videos because I really like it quiet. I prefer not to hear anything. I'm easily distracted, as I said earlier. So closing the door, having this little setup, and I have, uh, you can find tours of my office, but there's nearly not much to it. I will leave a link to the system I use because people ask like, how do you edit? I do run Linux, I run Pop! OS, and uh, it is an AMD Ryzen system with, like I said, a link to the 
actual video for that. Now, for the editing itself, let's talk about that. And I'll switch to this view because this is how I see the triple monitors. Now, you notice those lights, they were off for the photo, the DASNY lights, but they're on now, has a cool little remote. That's where those live. They're nice flat panel displays. I can adjust the brightness and get things tuned in when I do want to do a video in here. Um, but then I'm going to be using the Caden Live software. So let me switch to that. And this is how I edit. All the video data is synced. So as it created that file, as soon as I'm done with the recording, it is synced over to my TrueNAS system, which is how I do all of the editing. I use SyncThing for that. I've done videos on SyncThing before. It actually works great for instantly pulling all that footage and having a copy of it. Now, what you actually see is I've edited quite a bit of this, and this is my timestamps over here, the project over here. And because everything just comes in as one video, all I do is drag this one video in. If nothing needs to be cut out, nothing needs to be cut out until I switch to my phone. So there's the phone part of this video that you already watched. And now this part's going to get inserted right here at the end. And then it'll be processed and uploaded. And it's as simple as that. I may do some separate videos if there's interest in me talking more about Caden Live. I have some older videos, but they've really done a great job of revamping Caden Live and improving it. Um, it's not the crash monster it used to be. It actually is extremely stable. Uh, it has no problem handling and swinging the footage around, provided you have a fast enough computer. So I can scrub through stuff, find things really easy. Uh, it now supports some of the templating that I do for like the video. Uh, this is a chroma key template right here. So if we were to... Uh, take this out, it would turn bright green over here. But yeah, it's actually got a lot of features that are good. So maybe I'll do some separate videos on that if there's enough interest and curiosity. But there's a couple of people doing Caden Live videos right now uh, that I've been learning from. It's kind of been a slow iterative process. All right, as I said, I'll leave links down below to you know the gear I use and everything that I talked about, the kit link. I will uh, answer any questions if, uh, that you know come up on this. If I missed something, skipped over something, let me know if you're curious about it. If you're thinking about content creation and, you know, hopefully this helps you out and gets you some ideas, uh, but don't be afraid to do any of the things I did. I don't look at it as copying for those wondering. So my friend Jay from Learn Linux TV, uh, we actually have collaborated back and forth together. He started out using my studio and someone said, Tom, he stole your idea. And I'm like, no, no, no. I shared my idea just like I'm sharing with all of you with Jay. Um, and he uses a lot of the same tools for his studio. And uh, you can check out his channel, which is LearnLinux.com. TV or search it for it on YouTube. All right, and thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of this video. If you enjoyed this content, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from this channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. To hire a share project, head over to lawrencesystems.com and click on the Hire Us button right at the top. To help this channel out in other ways, there's a Join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page where your support is greatly appreciated. For deals, discounts, and offers, check out our affiliate links in the descriptions of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store, where we have a wide variety of shirts and new designs come out, well, randomly. So check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics covered on this channel. Thank you again, and we look forward to hearing from you. In the meantime, check out some of our other videos.